In this video, I will walk you through the boot sequence on Unisketch controllers. And I'll do it twice, first for this PVC Fly and then on an Airfly Pro. And this will get you a good idea of what is specific to a certain kind of device core and what is general for Unisketch. So let's get into it. The PVC Fly in front of me is connected to this bird dog camera. And notice how I have attached the, the USB cable to my laptop. And if you look at what I have on the screen on my laptop, I um, have first and foremost the Skyhoy firmware updater application. This is the one I'm talking about. And with this, you can update firmwares and uh, link to manuals and support. You can go to something called online configuration. And this is where you change what devices your um, controller connects to and the default configuration that gets baked into the firmware. You can update the firmware on the first button. And I also brought up the local configuration by pressing this button. This will bring you to the web UI of the actual controller. But today we want to look at the serial monitor and that is accessible from the top of the screen. It's very important that you see your device pop up here in this drop down before you go to the serial monitor. That will indicate that the serial monitor has some good content for you. So now that I go here, you see dots and numbers. And this basically tells you the controller is alive and kicking. It is doing something. It's actually idle. I think if I, if I press a button, you see some indication of uh, things happening on the controller. And that's what the serial monitor does. It gives you logging information. And most of the time you don't care about that. But sometimes your controller is not connecting to your camera or you are curious what is its IP and you can get all that from the serial monitor. So let's look at the boot sequence of the serial monitor because this is where this information is presented to you. So what I want to do now is to reboot my controller. And after I have done so, I'll go back to the home screen of the firmware updater to wait for the controller to reappear on the USB once again. So I press reset, I go to main and you'll see that for a moment it blanks out here and then I go back to the serial monitor. So now what we'll do is to look at the stuff that comes out here in the monitor and just a moment it's probably going to act pretty quickly and then we'll just scroll back and explain each line. So there as you see a lot of information information was uh, dumped out in our face from this uh, serial monitor. And as I said, most of the time you don't care about it. I don't care about these things if I can get away with it. But sometimes for figuring out what is actually happening to so study details, we need to get into it. So that's what we are talking about here. The first thing you see is the MAC address of the device. That's for network administrators, but if you are into that kind of stuff, you will see it appear in your um, uh, network router and, and, and so on. The next one tells us that the device is set up to request a DHCP address from your network router. In other words, we have no static IP on this one. It is asking the router to get one for you and it succeeds. So the IP address given to the controller is this one. You can also see the subnet mask, the gateway and the DNS delivered from DHCP. Now, if you had a static IP configured on your device, you would see the static IP right here. But that's very useful, right? The next thing that you are informed about is that the, the controller actually um, posts something called an MDNS a service record to the network. It is, in other words, telling the network that I am here, I am a PDC fly, and I have this IP address. So that is um, announced to the network according to this log, which is nice to know. It means that you could find, if you're on the same subnet, a discovery tool to find the device on the network and it would appear there. The next thing, boot count, tells us that this device has been rebooted 122 times. My guess is that this device is fresh from the stock at Skyhoy. Why? Because before we ship any product to our customers, we run burn-in tests on it. It means it gets at least 100 power cycles in, with different time intervals over a couple of days and uh, is uh, monitored for its connectivity to the network and stuff like that. So having a boot count of, of more than 100 is, tip, you know, it should always be like that on a Skyhoy controller. Obviously, you can imagine as you reboot the controller, the boot count is going up each time you do it. The uptime, uh, 44 hours is the number of hours it has been alive in its lifetime. That also corresponds with a, a two-day burn-in cycle or at least 36 hours burn-in cycle. 
And um, then there is also how much time has it spent in screensaver mode. That's what you see in these um, three lines of information. So the next line, I'm not going to explain this in detail because I simply can't remember. And that's the stuff that you run into in a log, right? That is when developers, they want to tell you a single bit of something that is significant to them. So to know exactly what the usage stats flags are, I would go and consult the code, but I know that it's going to be useful for some sort of debugging, but probably not the average kind of debugging. So that's what we see right there. What is also clear here is that the firmware on this one was compiled, I think today. It's September the 7th today, and this morning the firmware was con um, compiled for this controller. Actually, you'll find that firmware gets compiled every time you press this um, the update button, because our controllers are so dynamic that the, the firmware that gets baked into them is generated every time you edit the online configuration and asks it to update the firmware on your controller. So that's no surprise to me, but it's a good clue. When did you last time update your firmware? It's actually in the logs here. Now comes the real thing that most of you want to, to, to know, or, or what we want to know if we are supporting you. That is what device cores are installed on the controller. And on this one, we have a single device core for the bird dog camera. That is device core number zero. We see that it's a bird dog P200 camera and it's supposed to be on this IP address. So that's easy, right? It would be the same thing if you had a vMix computer that you wanted to connect to or an ATEM switcher or a router or other PDC cameras or regular cameras. Or if you have multiple device cores, you'll see multiple device cores listed here. The next thing that you're told is that we are loading DC options. DC options means device core options, and that would be settings for the device core. And uh, I don't think that we do have any particular device core options here. Sometimes if we do, then you'll see those listed. And the next thing and what happens from this point on is some information coming from the bird dog device core. I got to admit the first one looks like, oh, the word error is there. So is something wrong? And I can't exactly tell you what this one does. Uh, it would be interesting to investigate. But if I look further down, it seems we are actually successful in working with the camera. You'll see that um, you'll see that I'm controlling it. <laughs> I don't know why I'm not. Did I not? Oh, ah. you need to pick your camera from the camera selector. And there we go. So the camera is actually online with the, um, the controller, which also if we are scrolling through the log that has now progressed quite a bit here, We'll see some commands down here from the joystick is um, given to us from the um, yeah from the list here. Now let me see if I can find the place where we had our investigation going on right here, because um, what I think is very important for you as well is that, uh, and this is knowledge about how the Visca device core on our controllers work. When you enter a single IP address, that's all it takes to connect to more than one camera. So you, uh, let's say you had three bird dog cameras, you would arrange those three bird dog cameras, one, two, and three on consecutive IP addresses, which is revealed right here. You see that it's looking for camera number one on this one, camera number two on this IP address and so forth. So seven cameras, up to seven cameras are being looked for by the device core on successive IP addresses. Just a little plot spoiler here. I'm, well, I'm not sure I'll be demonstrating it today, but if you want to have non-consecutive IP addresses, there's a way to do it. And that's through the device core options. But that's for another video. But just so you know, but it's actually useful that in this log, you can see that camera one through seven is in fact being looked for even with a single IP address given for the device core. And that's the kind of stuff you can sometimes find in here. This line indicates we are done with all the initialization of the controller. The setup is done, as it says right here. And it's now interesting to see how will it react in connection to devices. We find that the Visca uh, base, that's a name for some software inside, is connecting to camera number one on this IP address. It's established, it's pulling status out, and it is apparently after doing these things, finally having received all information from camera one. And that means this button here is going to light up green and we are ready to rock. If I had more than one camera, I would see the same thing happening in the logs for those cameras. So 
Most of the time, hopefully you won't have to study the logs, but if you have an issue with the camera, if you get in touch with our support, you are likely to be invited to send the log to them or to um, study the log to provide information because this is where you see if there are any issues or if it's something like an IP address, which is not the right one. Yeah, so that was the basic introduction and the next thing we'll do is to see how it looks for an AirFly Pro. So now we swap the PTC Fly for an AirFly Pro. It's uh, right here, it's not connected yet. And in the serial monitor, you see that no device is connected. So I just saved that for this presentation. And uh, honestly, I haven't even rehearsed this. So um, let's just hope it works out, right? The device should pop up here. And now we can go to the serial monitor, as I talked about. And we should now see much of the same stuff that we saw before, starting with the uh, MAC address, and then information that we are already familiar with. So let's check this out. Uh, you also see that it's now apparently booted up and initialized and it's now going on with its business of uh, dotting out a number every second to show you that it's alive. But we'll scroll up and look at the initialization. This one is actually connected to some of the studio gear here. So I have, um, I have promised my producer that I won't touch anything because then I'm going to mess up the recording. We see the DHCP address is retrieved different than the other one, gateway, DNS, all that is there. We have also the MDNS announcement broadcasted. This has been booted 600 times and it has pretty many operation hours on its um, uh, record. We also see that, and this kind of is a testimony to this controller being left, left over to, uh, to have fun with itself. Apparently for two quarters or two thirds of the time it has been in sleep mode. Sleep mode, by the way, is great because it saves the controller's um, components from burning. This is why in sleep mode you see that we shut down the displays and we just rotate a little message that is balanced in how much the pixels are actually turned on and off so that in sleep mode we don't wear out the controller. We have the usage test flex which uh, curiously is 01 instead of uh, 11 like before. Again, I don't know what it is and I would look into the code, but it's not important for you. I'm sure about that. And finally, a different device call than the PTC Fly. So this is the ATEM device call on this IP address and with a setting apparently called audio equals legacy. Because ATEM switches recently had the Fairlight audio engine baked into them, some of the models, meaning that we need to distinguish whether it's the one or the other audio engine inside. Now we see be below the line of dashes a different initialization than we saw for the bird dog camera. And uh, of course, since we are now running an ATEM device core here, it is um, going through a number of steps in connection, which eventually ends with the message ATEM has connected. So that's the serial monitor. This is the tool you need to know if you need to bug fix your Skyhoy controller. If you are in touch with our support and need to supply information to them, this is the tool you need. And um, if you are curious about other aspects of our controllers from a technical level, I tell you we have lots of videos online. So go check out our YouTube channel, subscribe to it. Make sure that you browse and, and search for information there because we have a lot of good content for you.